Hello, everybody. This is Victor here from Trend Following Trading for Beginners, and here's my weekly update on my sample trading portfolio. Coming up next. Well, well, well. Welcome back for another week of my episode. Uh, well, for this week, we see quite a bit of stuff going on here. Uh, well, Dow Jones basically not doing much. It's up and down. It seems to have plateaued uh, just around the 30,000, 31,000 area. But uh, one thing big on the scene was uh, Bitcoin. Of course, everybody know about it. Last couple of weeks, everything gone up, or whole probably two months. It's go up and a uh, parabolic move, and which I said last week, watch out because the RSI is 90. And I have haven't been really like the shape of Bitcoin move uh, in the charts for at least the past month or so. And uh, it reached uh, last weekend of forty one k just as my um, podcast went out, and then on Monday truly really, boom it come back down to so around thirty five k, basically down like ten twelve percent, you know, down like five six k on a day on Monday. It's uh, very devastating. Like I say before. Bitcoin is so volatile at this stage. It's uh, very much similar to 2017. And uh, we just have to see what happened next. But uh, at least uh, from the time being, as for my system said, you know, short term wise, it's uh, gone into a sell mode rather than a bull mode. So we just see how it goes on that one. And um, then, of course, in the, uh, all of uh, last week, basically, it's always about Donald Trump and um, how uh, what you call it. Um, um, Joe Biden's coming in on uh, the coming Wednesdays and what happened uh, the week before when the Capitol riot and stuff and uh, all the people saying uh, blaming and pointing fingers to pointing fingers to uh, Donald Trump and um, also the social media for some reason um, take a stand uh, uh, together we say Facebook and Google and Twitter is all seems to one way or another you know, banning Donald Trump's tweets and uh, Facebook, I think, permanently as well. Um, so just getting uh, getting a bit worse. And I thought America is supposed to freedom of speech, isn't it? They are, everybody's allowed to say what they say. It's up to you. Uh, uh, people in America do listen or not. But for a uh, social media company, now suddenly become a judge and jury about what can be put on. Um, probably because everybody blamed Donald Trump for egging on the rioters on what happened to the Capitol Hill a week ago. And uh, I just feel that, um, um, well, this is how, um, what you call the Western world, especially America, basically, is tell, so to us, isn't it? To say freedom of speech, I can say whatever I want. Um, yet, when it comes to their own uh, government, when there's some rioting and stuff, I mean, he, 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 I mean if you look at Donald Trump's uh, speech and listen to them, they, they didn't basically riot, just basically ask people to uh, show the people power, just you know, go over and demonstrate peacefully. But he didn't say the word peaceful or anything to use violence. But yeah, when our people move in, uh, stand in one place, uh, some elements of people will get things, things out of hand. And that's what seems to be happening. Of course, it's, uh, we also have five people die last week. And uh, it's not very nice at all. So people basically pointing fingers to, uh, to Donald Trump. You see a lot of people... Uh, uh, basically, uh, trying to dis- distance themselves from uh, Donald Trump and disagree for uh, his stance and everything else. So it just um, s- basically all finger pointings. But then the funny thing is, the uh, last weeks, uh, last yeah, last twenty days or so of uh, Donald Trump's presidency, there's a lot more executions apparently in America, and um, uh, basically um, Donald Trump just you know want to. Uh, killed off a couple more people than usual uh, before he goes um, uh, from his White House. So it just it's very strange. And also even one one thing even more strange is we all know um, within what now it's about three days. So last week is only like a week or so, ten days or so before President Donald Trump passed over the the White House to President elect Joe Biden. Yet uh, Secretary of State Mon Pompeo still want to plan to go to Europe. Um, um just strange and the words on the street is basically the European counterpart doesn't really want to speak to <laughs> Mike Pompeo, especially I think the um, Luxembourg uh, Foreign Secretary is saying Donald Trump is the one inciting violence in Capitol who just uh, want, doesn't want to see Mike Pompeo at all. 
So、uh, Pompeo comes out and says, "Okay, we cancel European trips, all the trips for the last ten days, whatever, because、uh, they are concentrating handing power to、uh, a peaceful transition, so to speak, to、uh, Joe Biden." But、uh, what the heck, you know?、Um, who who want to speak to Mike Pompeo in the last bit of his、uh, of the journey of his、uh, of the of being a state secretary or even for Donald Trump for that matter, because.、Um, Who, what are they going to talk about? You know, the Joe Biden has been say we reverse a lot of、uh, um, Donald Trump's decisions. So I don't, I don't really know personally how how this might put me. You know, European trip was supposed to be just to be, as far as I'm concerned, very very weird. And、um, and of course,、um, the other thing is, of course, is just down. Joe so seems to be moving up high and higher. Then I think I believe.、Um, Uh, Joe Biden was saying this weekend he's、um, going to give out some uh, uh, emergency loan or whatever、um, payments to up to two thousand dollars to、uh, American people、uh, when he comes into power or something, and you know、uh, relief stimulus package and stuff like one point two trillion or something. It's quite large, huge, and this basically directly directly will affect the、uh, U.S. dollars. Uh, lately, U.S. dollars has been、uh, means for the last week has been up from、uh, around eighty nine point ten back up to ninety、uh, one. Not touching ninety one yet. I think maybe go as high as ninety one point five later on. But we just have to wait and see. But definitely a bounce back and go off. It got a hit on Friday and went down below to two hundred day moving average. It did down Monday as well. Probably and just like gone down below two hundred day moving average on Friday. Another twenty up, twenty five dollars or down. So now it's really、uh, down to like eighty twenty five to eighty thirty areas. To to me、uh, personally, I still believe in、uh, gold this year because I think、uh, we、we'll、definitely get a、uh, what you call a honeymoon effect for the、uh, Joe Biden、uh, administration coming in, and that is、uh, probably give him like three months, hundred days. Uh, everybody think it will be end of、uh, Donald Trump era. Joe Biden will come in and、uh, you know try to uh, uh, be nicer to his neighbors and his counterparts, and you know, less uh, reactive, um, less confrontational to China. Then it's probably good for tr- global trade and something, and probably put more、um, his hand on approach to vaccination America and help help out the American. And all this、uh, being said, we just have to wait and see. I mean, the the thing is. For the trade war, both houses, Democrats and Republicans, was you know pointing their、uh, fingers outwards towards China. You know, then hasn't really stopped. So I don't think Joe Biden coming in with any you know ease of you know going against China.、It、just、uh, both houses seems to have the common understanding that they have a common enemy, and this common enemy is、uh, it's called China.、Um, so I don't think Joe Biden coming in will、uh, stop. Um, America being you know crappy towards Chinese、uh, government, we just have to see on that one.、Um, second, I don't think、um, Joe Biden can、uh, can do much at the moment about America divisions. Hopefully, he can mend some of those you know divisions that Donald Trump have done. But a、uh, large amount of people voted for um, 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 President Donald Trump, so I don't know how they will react uh, uh, later on. I mean. Would they still continue work together with Joe Biden? Who knows? So, America is very much divided. But obviously, the other big issue is、uh, for everybody, especially in the UK as well. As the、um, COVID nineteen, we got、uh, continued lockdown here in this country. America is not doing any well,、uh, any better.、Uh, if, uh, in fact, it's the worst. And、uh, with lots of people dying, a、uh, lot of places,、uh, different states、uh, have one way or another different rate of lockdowns, and the economy is not helping. But、uh, as we've seen for the past time、um, since November, the we see the second、uh, we we bounce since、um, the president election, and、um, the stock market just continue to go up and up and up and up. As if、uh, the main street's problems, which I think will eventually raise his ugly head and get noticed by the main street, is at the moment being forgotten about. So,、um, so you have seen the Dow Jones and Nasdaq continue moving up, and then the main street people are continue losing jobs. You have uh, uh, COVID nineteen running around.、Uh, the foreign from UK also reach America, I believe, and.、Uh, Also, things going on, and people having to queue for a long time to get food parcels from、uh, food banks and stuff. And the queue is getting longer and longer. More people are not、um, not 
um, having employment. Some of them getting back to the old job, but a lot of them still being employed. So I don't quite see how the economy in America can uh, um, survive like this without government help, which that's what uh, Joe Biden uh, said he would do. But how much can you help if the um, if the economy is going to lock down and nobody have uh, in the world anyway uh, have a good handle of the COVID nineteen? Some can in Asia as if it has been some one way or another controlled, but there's a, a second way, third way, or fourth way being reintroduced by people who travel internationally. I mean the number is still small in the east, but then in the west, you know, it still has a well, one big wave have never been stopped. We just reduce a little bit, and then just continuing. Uh, Europe the same, UK the same, and uh, American the 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 problems uh, the main problem at the moment. So I just know how things goes. But as far as um, uh, trend falling goes, we don't really care. Um, uh, sounds a bit cold. But we are traders, and being trying to follow, we just look at the market, we look at the price, and that's it. We don't really look at any news. Um, the, we just look at the end of day price, and the, your system said continue to to stay long. And then you stay long on the on the indexes uh, for um, um, dollar strength, and it causes problem with gold and silver. Um, it looks one thing though, so I think the crude oil seems to be topped a little bit. I'll talk a bit about that uh, later on in my update on my uh, sample portfolio, but uh, that's another warning sign coming up on on this one. So last week I, I did warn about the Bitcoin, and the other thing I want to warn about is the TLT, basically the ETF that track uh, long dated uh, government uh, treasury in America. It continued to go down. That only means one thing. That means the U.S. bonds, 10 years, 20, 30 years, I think 20, 30 years was one, uh, basically having a high yield, that means the price is lower, therefore the TLT ETF also go lower as well. What does that mean? Basically, people are taking the money out from the bond market, uh, so the price is reduced, and therefore the yield goes up. And I think probably um, that's not been talked about much at the moment, because obviously everyone thinking about the COVID-19, thinking about the uh, uh, um, Donald Trump passing the power over to um, uh, Joe Biden, and uh, but uh, slowly the bond market is doing its things and uh, raising its ugly head. So I don't know what's going on. The other thing is uh, for weeks and months now, both seen for my uh, podcast regarding the tracking of the Chinese dollar. It just uh, I haven't seen anybody talk about the strength of Chinese dollar uh, against U.S. dollar. So as if. You know, it's, it's no news at all or something. But it, what it looks like to me anyway is that a lot of American money, um, it doesn't seem to be similar to, let's say, pounds or euro against um, um, the Chinese yuan, the Chinese dollar. But for American dollar particularly anyway, it um, seems to a lot of money is going to China and which causes the U.S. Uh, by the Chinese dollar strengthen against U.S. dollars, and uh, all this money is basically going into Asia, in this case China through Hong Kong, I presume. Uh, basically, you see uh, that's the economy. So overall, in 2020, still have a I think 1.2 or 2 percent uh, increase in uh, GDP. So it's the only country in the world, I believe, uh, actually making any money or any progress last year. And um, I think that trend is continue with the rest of the world still suffering. Yeah, China is suffering as well. If you do use uh, the data to be, you know, hardly any or uh, very low number of COVID nineteen or reintroduction or uh, wave two, wave three, still very low number. But Chinese being Chinese, the Chinese government is uh, uh, always like to uh, uh, give you a. Uh, uh, um, what you call the numbers they advertise is always, you know, um, being played on, you know, massage. So I presume those numbers will be much higher. But still, um, one thing is to be sure is uh, Asia is definitely out of lockdown a lot more and faster than Europe. So people are definitely going to Asia. And then the biggest uh, powerhouse in Asia is China. So it's no difference, no surprise that people are moving into China or try to invest in China or put the money in China rather than the U.S. And uh, this reflects the U.S. dollar and Chinese dollar's uh, exchange rate. Um, we basically just had to wait and say, I think 2021 will be the similar thing. 
um, this um, uh, path, this pattern seems to have started middle of last year in 2020. So uh, I think this year 2021 will be continue. So we just have to wait and see how things go. So without further ado, next is uh, my review of my portfolio coming up. Okay, first of the bad is Apple. Uh, service last week, short term is a sell, medium term is neutral, long term is a buy. Amazon continue from last week. Short term is a sell, medium is neutral, but long term is also neutral now. So it's uh, basically Amazon is going sideways a bit. Uh, and has been doing that uh, lately anyway, last couple of weeks. So we just wait and see. Next is uh, Australian dollars against US dollars. Um, uh, still a buy across the board, so short term, medium term, and long term is still a buy. But um, I think because of the um, US dollar index, I've uh, recovered a bit. Not much from 89 back to uh, 80, uh, 91, that kind of thing. Or oh, not even 91 yet, it's close to it. So a couple of points, but uh, it, uh, the increase in the strength of string dollars against US dollar seems to have paused. And that's the uh, same for anything that uh, crosses with uh, US or price in US dollars. And just have to wait and see how that might affect uh, affect the things. That one thing that definitely affecting is bank crude and the uh, WTI crude oil. Short term, medium term, long term is all uh, uh buy at the moment still. But if you look at the chart, it seems to have uh, plateau a bit and also come to some sort of a downward trend. It just reaches a downward trend line. And um, we just wait and see if the uh, this price actually will break it above or not. So slowly since April, we've seen a uh, slow and steady rise, and has been uh, of uh, crude oil and has been plateauing more or less. Uh, the rate of change has slowed a lot for the last couple of months, but it's still increasing. So we just wait and see what happened. But uh, this trend line, if it's broken, then there's some more way to go. It happens. Uh, is is there for both. Uh, Brand crude as well as WTI, uh, the US crude oil. So, uh, but it looks like it is uh, uh, having difficulties breaking up of that line. So, this uh, downward trend. So, have a look. Uh, so, wait and see. These two basically is definitely a warning. Just like last week with uh, Bitcoin and uh, uh, TLT ETF. Next is uh, DAX. Um, the European uh, German uh, index basically buy across the board for short term, medium term, long term. So not much, no change from last week. Down Jones next uh, again is buy across the board, short term, medium term, long term is also buy. Not much changes here. Like I said earlier, the Wall Street and Main Street seems to be uh, diverging. Um, that's that's what it does as far as we try and foreign goes. Um, uh, we just follow the rules, but uh, from my view, I'm more like you know. P- people know about this this i think this call um uh demand how i make two million dollars in the stock market from nicholas davis uh, is one of the uh, books i are constantly reading and reread it just uh to me basically he's definitely one of uh, a trend follower guy it's not just uh, jesse livermore i think jesse livermore definitely is a big granddaddy of the trend following but I think uh, Nicholas Davis uh, is also another one that's really, really good. Uh, he only go for the upside. He never sh- mentioned anything in his book about short selling. Uh, but uh, it just basically showed the power how to uh, trend following and such. It's a very, very useful book to to have, uh, to read about and understand it. I'll probably do a podcast bit later before those of you have uh, um, any spare change. I think that's definitely one of the books that you should buy on uh, uh, audio will just listen to it uh, on a daily basis. It's definitely will help. Uh, next is uh, FUSI 100. Um, continuing buy across the board. Just lay down Jones and DAX. So short term, medium term, long term is a buy. Go like I said earlier. Uh, short term is a sell since last week. Um, the neutral, medium term, long term is also a sell on Friday. I believe it's gone down and broke below the uh, 50 day, uh, 20 day moving average as well. So now it's around 1820, 1830 area. Um, we just had to wait and see for, for me anyway, I just believe um, the, yeah, the US dollar index uh, have recovered somewhat and it's pausing for gold and anything I say before, uh, radar against US dollars, any cross against US dollars is uh, pausing. But as far as I'm concerned, this is only temporary. With uh, we all know U.S. dollar is weakening. You know all this money that's been pumped in by Donald Trump since the, uh, March last year. That's another one point two, one point five trillion or something. At least a trillion U.S. dollars coming in. 
uh, from uh, Joe Biden when he can become a president uh, next Wednesday with both uh, lower and uh, Senate House uh, controlled by uh, Democrats. I don't think there's any problems uh, passing that thing. And from my understanding, from my previous uh, research, um, Democrat always one way or another uh, fix the economy and then, then they lose power and then uh, give it to uh, uh, Republicans. Republicans seem to then rip the rewards, see how good they are, but overall it's always the Democrats that fix the economy as far as I'm concerned since uh, Bill Clinton's years. And so I definitely personally believe uh, Joe Biden will continue that line and will probably put more money in more better policies to help uh, businesses as well, help people to go back to jobs and uh, more focuses inwardly than go outwardly uh, with COVID-19 and uh, food and, and education and medical medicine, that kind of thing. So we just wait and see. So that means this, there'll be definitely more spending uh, within uh, America more money printing and that means um, definitely good for gold as far as I'm concerned this year is still year of gold and uh, so it's year of the silver as well but um, probably a bit delayed because of the new presidency coming in so for the first 120 days or something so three to maybe three to six months time frame just have to wait and see how it is definitely about three months so maybe uh, middle or maybe let's say f- April May onwards before you see anything um, 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 big decline, maybe starting again with a uh, with the uh, U.S. dollar index. We just said wait and see. Just those are my prediction. As far as I'm concerned, I don't really care about prediction because I know that whatever I predict is always gone bananas. But it's just that the fundamental view it looks like is very much uh, supporting the the view of U.S. dollar getting uh, weaker later on. So I personally just don't believe that the dollars index will last you know we can't even last but who knows it's why i'm concerned trend falling i'm just continuing to watch the trend but i definitely uh keep in weary eyes on on the on the gold price and when the market turns you know like like last week when it turned down a lot i just have to say okay yes this is what happened sometime you get the one big whack coming down you know 100 dollars down and another 30 dollars down on last friday um, then all your trade got uh, killed, so to speak, and yeah, I was licking my wounds. Um, yeah, but so is it. That's how trend following does. You know, not every trade is uh, profitable, and basically we just have to act like uh, a casino. Basically, you have a system that is uh, have an edge that is over long term. When you play thousand thousand of uh, of trades, um, uh, you end up more money. Um, each individual trade have no resemblance or relationship to the previous one or next one and because your system have a positive edge over many many trades you just have to keep on taking that uh, trade the problem is for most new trader a lot of time they see one or two failures or let's say it's 10 failure in a row they stop you know one of the big uh, trend followers uh, in turtle I don't remember which which name it was um he um I want to train for it anyway. He basically have lost like 12 times in a row because the market keep on going sideways and he lost 12 uh, times in a row, 1% every time. And then the, the 13 times he actually lost on a big trend and just make all the money back. This is the type of thing that a true trend follower investor will have to do. It's not nice, definitely, I tell you, with the heart on my heart. Where uh, with my heart, uh, when you lose 1%, uh, one or twice is never nice and if you lose like five or six times in a row which is you know, happen quite often um it's definitely not good to your though no good to your emotion but because we have a trend following system the system has been tested to be uh, always become positive give you positive result and um, uh, make you money over long run you just have to keep on taking every trade because uh, as i said before each individual trade have no um uh, relationship with each other and you never know where the big trade the big trend will start and uh, so you have to take every signal from your system and with no doubt uh, some of it will turn out into be you know bananas you know not not nice not good uh, so uh, sell and lose your money but one or two of this you know all you need is one or two of that per year to make it all your money goes money come back and pays for some more and create you uh, give you a positive result for the year 
Uh, unfortunately, we don't know when that will happen. So you have to just have to take every trade and just have to, of course, if uh, money ma- management comes in, there's no less, no more than 1%. Uh, personally, maybe, you know, 2% as quite maximum per uh, trade. We just have to wait and see how it goes. So just watch go for now. Next is uh, Hang Seng, Hong Kong Index. Buy across the board. Uh, so short term, medium term, long term buy. Um, this one seems to be um, now only now for the past three, four weeks or so, following um, what Dan Jones is doing, going up slowly. Uh, probably because of the uh, COVID nineteen China effect as well as you know the democratic uh, uh, demonstrations and stuff and uh, security law uh, problems. Um, so China, um, well Hong Kong in this one, Hong Kong Hang Seng index has been quite slow. And moving up, but uh, is now on the buy trend. Um, on this one, there is a um, a, a little of a head wound, headway coming in around twenty nine thousand. Just so we can see if that get broken or not. Next is Nasdaq. Um, again, similar down Jones short term, medium term, long term. We saw so buy. We just have to wait and see. I mean, last year down Jones or uh, Nasdaq in particular made quite a bit of money. Uh, you know, gone up quite a lot since uh, April. This flood of money from the Fed just going to the stock market, and uh, Nasdaq is the one that you know make the most money out last year. Uh, I'm not sure whether it continue to make so much more this year, but just wait and see. So far, so good. It's still a buy mode, so buy across the board for Nasdaq. Next is Nikkei. Again, uh, by across the board. So all the major indices seems to be all falling down. Jones one another. It's all going by, by, by. So for that, uh, Nikkei two to five in Japan is the same. So buy short term, medium term, long term. Just wait and see. Next is silver. Uh, yep, same as gold. Short term is a sell. Uh, medium long term is neutral. Uh, I think this one. Uh, silver hasn't gone up as much as gold lately, and therefore when it come down. I haven't gone down as much as gold as well, but still quite a bit. I think it's below twenty five dollars at the moment. Uh peak last time was well, back in twenty eleven was fifty dollars. Is you know, uh you gold just already make a new peak, you know. Uh it broke in the nineteen twenty areas and gone to twenty thousand oh, sorry, uh two thousand something. Uh two thousand one hundred ish area, but uh for silver it hasn't even broke uh or any for near the fifty dollars mark. So we just have to wait and see hopefully this year make that but who knows. I'm uh, just gonna follow the trend and see how it goes. Next is US dollar against Chinese dollar, Chinese yuan. Uh sell across the board short between long term like I said before it is uh, yeah, um more money, more US dollar seems to be going into going to China. Basically just exchange rate tells you basically. Uh, it takes a uh, lot more U.S. dollars to buy a Chinese dollar, so to speak. Yeah, and then um, it's just sell across the board as far as I'm concerned on for this cross. Uh, but of course, the um, um, the U.S. dollar index is uh, showing uh, strength lately, and also you look at this cross, um, you look at the RSI. Um, um, it seems okay. Seems to have some uh, way to go up yet. But look at the um, uh, mark the histogram. I said last couple of weeks as well. Uh, there's a uh, bearish divergent there. Basically, the the mark D is uh, moving up slowly. Uh, uptrend line, but the actual price across itself is uh, going down at the moment. Last week or so, it seems to like side tr- going to sideways a bit. So, we just have to see uh, how much this US dollar uh, index recovery will be. But uh, there may be a uh, turning here, so just wait and see. Okay, US dollar against Japanese yen, um, seems last week more or less. Um, short term is a buy, medium term is changed to neutral because you know, somehow, uh, well. Basically, the US dollar is strengthened a little bit, so medium term is neutral, long term is still a sell. Um, British pounds again, Japanese yen and British pound against US dollar, but well, these two crosses continue to buy across the board, short term, medium term, long term is a buy. So just wait and see. So uh, the British seems to have uh, helped um, you, um, British pounds to move up. Um, not much against the Japanese yen, but definitely again, continue with the. Um, uh, US dollars. Okay, from my chart view, the analysis it looks like there's a 
we first had and showed them what be happening there and uh, it's just broken the net now just a wait and see now those charting pull it may be it's just a confirmation maybe it's just like a side indicator to show something so until we we test it um maybe 1.34 or even 1.32 and can we bounce back and continue to move up we don't know yet so we just have to wait and see next is of course bitcoin i said before uh short term is a sell medium and long term is your buys we can find the volatile uh, my warning last week was timely basically on monday I, I mean last podcast was sunday and then monday the price gone gone down i think that 12 percent or so at one point if we pound back the bit to uh 38 000 ish but now i think on the weekend it's gone back down to 30 uh, five so um yeah it's gone down to like forty one thousand over the last weekend to now thirty five thousand so i dropped off by uh, six six uh thousand uh poor pawns so to speak so it's, it's quite a bit on, on, on that front so um yeah so if you're actually in it in this big con just uh, remember um be careful when it turns just get out okay it's very volatile at the moment um, next is uh, iShares 1 TTL TTF, which I talked about earlier. Uh, this tracks the uh, long dated US the bond, uh, short term, medium term, and long term sell. This continues basically to sell. Not much talks about in the main street, the main news about, you know, uh, financial news about the, the um, US government bonds, the 10 years yields is above 1%, the 30 years UIBD is 1.8 or something. So, um, so slowly, um, somehow one way or another, people's money are draining out from bonds as well, therefore the yield increases. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, maybe the money is basically just you know getting out of uh, bond and into the the Dow Jones and Nasdaq and continue that way. Who knows? So maybe on into China. Who knows? But definitely this uh, showing that um, people are not very happy buying the all those government bonds or corporate bonds or junk bonds, whatever. And therefore the yields increases. Uh, and I think definitely there's there's some signal here uh, worth to study about. Next is Tesla, uh, still continuing support trend buy, is short term, medium, long term, so buy. So just wait and see. Um, seems we did, it did pretty well last year. Again, just at last stack. I'm not quite sure uh, this year will be continuing doing that well, but uh, just so far so good. Just wait and see. Uh, next is um, Australian dollar, uh, Australian index, um, um, XJO. Short term, medium term, long term is still a buy. So, uh, so there's some fluctuation with the short term, but still on a buy. So I try to actually so just have to continue. Last but not least is Alibaba. Short term have turned to buy. Medium term is neutral. Uh, long term is still a sell. So uh, Alibaba for um, for the past month or so have gone, well, about three weeks or so, have gone down below the 200 day moving average. Um, um, now it's recover somewhat, uh, but it's still below the 200 day moving average. It probably try to go back up there again, uh, but we have to wait and see how things are. So short term is a buy, definitely. Um, neutral in the medium term and long term is a sell again. There seems to be a head and shoulder pattern showing up. Um, the, um, the reason I think about uh, the current price to 240 or whatever around that area is uh, so neckline. So, uh, unless this neckline is broken, it has a uh, possibility of further downward movement from on Alibaba share. So, just have to wait and see. So, for this week, just um, similar to last week, nothing much happening on the stock market. It's just the yeah, ups and downs, ups and down. Um, down Jones have uh, going around 31,000 um, there and about. Uh, I think all eyes will be on next Wednesday when Joe Biden come into office in with the White House and see any celebration in, uh, during Wednesday. Uh, hopefully there's no violence. There may be some demonstration, but hopefully all of that is peaceful. And I wish the best for all the American listeners. Uh, I'll speak to you next week. Bye for now.